Beyonce, she became vegan and folks jumped on this meat heathen religious train. Trained to follow celebrities or whoever's body looks better than me, grab me a smoothie with no sugar, no fat, no taste, embrace juicing and detoxing to lose weight, or, or let's place cravings on display using familiar frames. Claims made holding crispy fried chicken sandwiches, supersized fries with double cheeseburgers, tacos with chips, and flavored dips, licks of triple scoop chocolate chip cookie dough ice cream, while fiends sing praises to patty sweet potato pies. You just got a food high simply listening. <laughs> Sir, your mouth is glistening with grease. But tell me what kind of feast produces obesity and diabetes? And can you free me from this high blood pressure? I wish Chick-fil-A's My Pleasures came with a disclaimer because I'm struggling to tame her. You, you know her. You know that inside voice. She says, girl, just be fat. <laughs> then she says, girl, you need to lose some weight. Sis, eat everything. Sis, you better not eat another thing. Be keto. Choose paleo, try vegan, try fasting. Loud and lasting voices give me choices paired with confusion. The solution, I'm not certain. But with a new burden to change, I can no longer remain the same. With a new burden to change, we can no longer remain the same. So I think you probably did not think that you would hear another poet, but I am most certainly a poet. I am also a nutrition scientist and professor. And in these roles, I study and attempt to find ways to help people make healthier eating decisions. I do this because I know what it means to struggle with food. I was a fat kid. I was a kid who was teased about her weight, and fat shamed by family and peers. I was a kid who overate to find emotional relief and then later practiced starvation. I was a slave to food, whether I ate too much of it or completely abstained from it. But as I became more educated about nutrition, I made it my mission to tell my story in creative ways and help others overcome similar struggles. Research shows that high blood pressure, obesity, diabetes, and other chronic health issues are all connected to our eating habits. But what I found is that if, if we can tell our stories, if we can talk about nutrition and food using innovative techniques, we may have a better chance at improving our eating behavior. This is why I love and use the performing arts. The performing arts not only entertains us, it not only engages us, but it makes us vulnerable to a message. Rhyme, music, poetry, storytelling, these have all been used to promote connection, provoke awareness, to facilitate therapy, and to open communication in stigmatized areas. Even in some of our academic scientific communities, the performing arts and other art forms have broadened STEM education, to STEAM education as they recognize the value the arts add to programming. Not only do the arts add value to programming, but also to health and well-being outcomes. A three-year study done at the University of Florida Center for Arts and Medicine found that those who participated in the arts rated their mental health, their physical health, and their quality of life more positively. Furthermore, the National Organization for Arts and Health suggests that when we incorporate the arts into various healthcare settings, it leads to reductions in anxiety, reductions in pain, a better environment of care, and improved health communication. To bring it closer to home, I created and piloted the curriculum Health Speaks with 17 adolescents in a community setting. So Health Speaks uses spoken word poetry to facilitate messages of health 
and nutrition concepts. In response to this curriculum, Majority of these adolescents believe that spoken word poetry, the poetry that was in Health Speaks, could be used to speak and teach about a variety of health topics, including nutrition, and it was preferred over a lecture. Can you believe that? Preferred over lecture. <laughs> Not only have I used spoken word poetry with adolescents, but in the basic nutrition courses that I teach at Florida A&M University, I've used multiple art forms to engage students. In one activity, I had over 500 students to watch spoken word, music, and comedy YouTube videos with food and nutrition references. In response to these videos, over 90% of these students believe that these videos could be used to open conversations and provide awareness concerning food, nutrition, and health issues. So here are a couple of direct quotes from students. This course, this is the course I teach, has shown me the impact social media and art platforms play in shaping nutrition and eating habits amongst people. The addition of art to important topics such as health and nutrition not only makes, the, makes them more interesting, but it also makes the information memorable. Here's a second quote from a student. Being in this class has not only taught me about certain foods and vitamins that can help benefit me, but also that you can teach others about health and nutrition through the daily things we use, such as our phones for social media and laptops for YouTube videos. The spoken words, poems, and speeches have made me want to be aware of my health and also my family and peers' health and well-being. As these quotes suggest, not only should we be getting these messages from different art forms, but we should be creating artistic spaces where we get an opportunity to learn more about nutrition, learn more about health. In the spring of 2019, I led a project where close to 70 students and faculty came together to create a documentary. Uh, the documentary, Getting Body the Natural Way, in a world of butt shots, breast implants, and tummy tucks. Highlights of this documentary included monologues, poetry, paintings, music, all paired with educational content focused on body image and healthy eating. The beauty of this documentary was that it was produced by those who may be suffering from health issues the most, African Americans. African Americans are almost twice as likely to be diagnosed with diabetes, and the prevalence of high blood pressure in African Americans in America is among the highest in the world. Very few documentaries highlight or have a strong representation from people of color when it comes to body image, nutrition, and food. But this groundbreaking media piece used young African Americans to provide a voice to a growing problem, resulting in many of them making better eating decisions. Obviously, as illustrated in my poetic introduction, it can be challenging to make dietary changes when there's so much, there's so many competing messages. For instance, if you choose the low-fat smoothie, someone says that has too much sugar, right? If you choose the no-carb steak, someone says that's just too much, too much fat. If you choose the granola bar, someone says you should have chosen fruit. It's very difficult to win when there are so many competing messages, so much conflicting information. How do we navigate through all of these messages? The first step is to recognize that we all have a health and nutrition journey. It will look different for each person. Priorities, access, culture, goals, they will all demand different dietary needs along our journeys. My goal is to find the art form that moves you and then use it to educate you. So what moves you? What art forms provoke a response from you? How can you use the performing arts in your own journey towards healthier eating. Even further, how can we use the performing arts in our communities as we promote healthy eating and overall well-being? Statistics have demonstrated why we need to change. We know the detriment poor eating can do to our health. So I challenge you to find ways the performing arts can help you. Artistic tools surround us. Pay attention to them. Use them. 
So whether you're on social media and you follow the weight loss journey of someone who has a certain dietary lifestyle, or, or maybe you watch a YouTube video where someone is overcoming some uh, health issue or illness and they have certain healthy eating practices, or maybe you go to a live show where you he hear a comedian make jokes on how we eat, or maybe you're the person who will organize public skits and monologues that force us to think about what we are consuming. I'm asking that you find the art form that moves you and makes you critically think about the food you're eating. I'm asking that you find entertaining and engaging ways to better your own health as well as the health of our communities. As I said in the poem, with a new burden to change, I can no longer remain the same. With a new burden to change, we can no longer remain the same.